down Periscope. We're going to spend $368 billion building up to eight nuclear-powered submarines. Big announcement in San Diego by the US President and British and Australian Prime Ministers. Honoured to be here to welcome Prime Minister Albanese. Albanese. Joe obviously hadn't seen the ad. It won't be easy under Albanese. It was a better effort than the last time he held a joint press conference about submarines with the British and Australian Prime Ministers, when he didn't even try to remember ScoMo's name. And I want to thank uh, that fellow down under. Albanese used the announcement to pay homage to the military heritage that Australia, Britain and the United States share. For more than a century, our brave citizens from our three countries have been part of a shared tradition of service in the cause of peace and sacrifice in the name of freedom. 100% Joe Biden was asleep just then. <laughs> we honour their memory today. Seriously. The really important part of this announcement is that Australia's new subs will be constructed in Australia. Albanese likened the project to the creation of a local car industry after the Second World War. The scale, complexity and economic significance of this investment is akin to the creation of the Australian automotive industry in the post-World War II period. That'll have voters thinking about the halcyon days of Aussie motoring when engineers in the auto plants of Victoria and South Australia created world-beating supercars like the Monaro and the GT Falcon. The racy looks of a high-priced Continental rally car, but no fancy foreign price tag. And we'll try to forget that these were the same engineers who also built dogs like the Holden Chimera and Leyland P76. Well, it'll be good for jobs at least. You can expect to hear the PM talk a lot about employment opportunities. Around 20,000 direct jobs for Australians. Good jobs with good wages, working to ensure the stability and prosperity of our nations for jobs and skills and research and innovation. The same spirit of innovation behind our other world-beating industries. That's football, meat pies, kangaroos and holding cars. It will create a lot of jobs though, there's no doubt about that. An $8 billion upgrade at Stirling Naval Base is a lot of work for a lot of tradies. One of the only places left in the world where a bloke who dropped out in grade 6 can stand next to a shovel all day and somehow make the same amount of money as a doctor. But let's not get sucked into thinking that government spending is automatically good for the economy. Defence is not a wealth generating industry, it's like aged care. It employs a lot of people but it's pretty much dead money. The only way defence is good for an economy is if you export the ships or tanks or artillery pieces that you build and earn some foreign currency like Germany does. When you build it for your own use, it's just a massive drag on the budget. Got to be a lot of sailors in town. Under the New Deal, British and American submariners will rotate through Fleet Base West, that's Garden Island, starting in 2027. Ladies, seamen, 12 o'clock! They'll be needing some r r after touring a dangerous war zone, by which I mean Rockingham. Shore leave is good for the economy because when sailors are here, they spend like, well, you know. But it's a minor financial benefit in the scheme of things. We've got a trillion dollars in debt and we're about to spend close to $400 billion at a time when we're seeing headlines like this. We can't build enough toilets for our school kids. Excuse me, may I go to the bathroom first? 300 students in Highgate who are sharing just three dunnies are being told they've got to hold on. Mm, priorities. The submarine program isn't the end of this game. We've just fired the starting gun in an arms race with China. And China's got a lot of arms. Xi Jinping now says he's going to turn his armed forces into a ring of steel to protect the country, which is wonderful news for shareholders of BHP, Rio and FMG. Here comes the money. Well, what are our other options? Look, I'm not saying we shouldn't be striving to have a strong and capable military. Walk softly and carry an armoured tank division, I always say. And submarines are the ultimate deterrent because unlike an armoured tank division, you can never be quite sure where they are. The Chinese will never know for certain whether these subs are sitting off the coast of Rocco waiting for maintenance or fully armed and operational sitting off Shanghai. And Beijing knows that when a missile is fired from a submarine at close quarters, there's next to nothing you can do to stop the rocket because the time between launch and strike is often just a few minutes. That great explosive unknown will give them pause for thought before they do something stupid in the South China Sea or the Taiwanese Strait, or at least that's the theory. A busy time for the Australian Defence Force. ADF is facing enemies without and within. <laughs> WA Police and the McGowan government are copping some heat at the moment about a press conference about gun control they held last year. It was a nifty photo op. 
The star of the show was a 50 calibre rifle that's the most powerful legal firearm in Western Australia. The cops want them banned. The live fire exercise at Pinjar Firing Range caused the Royal Australian Air Force and the SAS all sorts of bother. They warned the cops that the range was unsuitable. The Air Force went so far as to issue something called a notice to airmen. Their non-inclusive language is not mine. They warned pilots at nearby RAF Base Pierce there was the danger of ricochet for anyone flying under 18,000 feet. Seems like a lot of hassle for one press conference. It'll go down as one of those great examples of spin doctors getting ahead of themselves. Don't let the problem stand in the way, because you know where every problem is? There's a solution right around the corner. I'm getting an ice cream headache. The only reason we know the background is because the Sporting Shooters Association did some digging under the... Information Act. The shooters are now mounting the unusual argument that they be allowed to keep a weapon that's so dangerous it shouldn't be used at a dedicated firing range overseen by the SAS and Tactical Response Group. And the cops are trying to convince us it's a matter of emergency that we pass laws to ban a rifle so rare even the WA police force had trouble finding one. They ended up spending eight grand to get one. A lot for one gun, but doesn't get you much submarine. I'm Ben Harvey. That's confidence. That's confidence. That's confidence. Once you know what you're doing, there's nothing stopping you. To take on the market with confidence, watch Trading Up, your daily finance update at thewest.com.au.